it marks the end of the beginning of quantum computers. And it marks the end of the beginning of quantum computers because D-Wave has a passion. D-Wave has a passion to take all the talk about quantum computing, all the great research that's been done on quantum computing in labs around the world, and take all that expertise, take all that knowledge, and build something that's useful. Useful in the life sciences, useful in quantitative finance, useful in logistics and scheduling, and all the many other great applications that require the acceleration that quantum computing can bring. We all know that digital computers have their limitations. They just can't handle all problems. Digital computers do many problems well. They deliver uh, user satisfaction in many areas. But due to that other famous Englishman, Alan Turing, they have an architecture that um, deals with things serially and uh, they just don't scale well. And even with continuing Moore's law advances, for another century perhaps, they still wouldn't handle some really hard problems. And that lends an opportunity for quantum computers. It lends an opportunity for D-Wave to provide quantum computing accelerators which working in harmony with digital computers will provide even more user satisfaction. What is a D-Wave quantum computer? We use the adiabatic model of quantum computing and we use superconducting flux qubits. The adiabatic quantum computing, uh, the theory on that has been, was developed, I believe, initially in MIT by Dr. Seth Lloyd and Ed Fermani. Uh, they were a great inspiration uh, to our founder in, um, in building the adiabatic model. Uh, superconducting flux qubits, if you look at all the technologies that are around and uh, in the labs, uh, we believe that superconducting flux qubits uh, provide the greatest opportunity for scaling. We're positioning our device as I've indicated as an accelerator for solving intractable problems and scaling existing problems. And the machine as a program is delight because it's natural, naturally parallel. It can handle uh, many, many variables, many per and deal with permutations very quickly. But it's addressed serially uh, so that the, uh, the modification to existing software is minimal at most. And then importantly, it has a compelling cost of ownership. Small footprint on the computer room floor. Very little power in its operation. Very easy to program. Is it scalable? I think one of the, uh, one of the big problems in the advance of quantum computing over time is scaling from small number of qubits to numbers of qubits that are commercially uh, relevant. And I think that the, um, the architecture we have, as I've indicated, uh, is, is enormously scalable. And one of the big advantages we have is that we're building our processor chips in a semiconductor facility. Uh, we're using semiconductor equipment. And uh, in the uh, prototype lab at JPL, uh, where we're building <coughs> processors, they're running CMOS stuff through, uh, not simultaneously, but um, about the same time that uh, they're building our processors. We cool the system in superconducting electronics, as you're aware. We cool it for millikelvin uh, to get the superconducting uh, activity. Uh, the basic system that we provide is scalable. The cooling is scalable to millions of qubits. It's not just really uh, enough power in the basic system uh, to go much larger. The requirements that were, the geometries that we're using are well within industry standards, uh, our line widths and our spacing are no challenge to the semiconductor fab. And then we benefit from semiconductor fab advances as more as more law 
advances, uh, so does uh, our capability to use it. How does it work? Well, it's real simple. Uh, here's from my vantage point at least. Not being a physicist, uh, being an old engineer uh, that's gone into business, it looks real simple. We use quantum mechanical effects. Uh, when I went to school, they didn't teach quantum mechanics. Uh, Newton was my boy. Another great Englishman. <laughs> we present the problem to the machine as a graph. We take the problem and cast it as a graph. The system obeys the laws of quantum mechanics and settles to its lowest energy state in sound sinister. That just gives the solution to the problem. Isn't that easy? I don't know why it took our engineers so long. <laughs> Anyhow, we are excited about the application of this machine. Uh, just about every vertical sector has what's known as MP hard problems. These problems are very difficult to scale. Uh, we're dealing with uh, Alan Askerik Music uh, on um, protein folding. Uh, you'll see him in the video soon. Uh, you know, protein folding takes years on a classical computer. And we can get a quadratic speed up uh, with our system. So instead of 100 years, we can do 10. Instead of 100 months, we can do 10. Instead of 100 weeks, we can do 10. Uh, Drug discovery, placing around, uh, optimizing the, uh, the packaging uh, density that one can put on a chip. Uh, great applications in quantum finance. Uh, just the, uh, the one hour closing at a bank, uh, the, the money they would save with a quantum computer, they could buy 10 machines. Then, uh, great, uh, great applications in search. Uh, we have uh, one of the things that we've done uh, from my semiconductor days. I realized that when you build a chip, you have to build circuits to, uh, so you can show how the chip works. So we built a reference application, which is a highly constrained uh, parametric database uh, search application, and uh, we'll be demonstrating that later. We're addressing a huge market. The HPC market in 2005, in just in the large segments, was 7.2 billion dollars. Uh, this is the area we see application for our machine uh, in this marketplace. Uh, just get outside of the, uh, the large verticals and you get a $9.2 billion market. This market's growing at a rate of 25% per year compounded. Uh, even in smaller segments like, uh, like finance, they're very large markets. So it's a huge, uh, a huge pond that we have to fish in. Where are we today? We've got scalable architecture. Uh, we've proved that. Well, last year we've gone from 2 to 4 to 16 qubits. We have a working qubit, the 16 qubit system, which we'll demonstrate today. Running a commercial application. That is the largest quantum computer ever demonstrated in public, and it's the first time ever that a commercial application will have been run on a quantum computer. We built the system, uh, we have a massive, we, you know, we, we have a tendency to talk about the uh, physics and the engineering of the, uh, the hardware platform. And I often say that our, our VPS software must feel like rather than danger uh, But in, in, in actual fact, there's a massive amount of software work and algorithms and uh, uh, graphing work and optimization work. And uh, we built what we're calling, what, what we're casting is a horizontal uh, vertical application development platform. So it's a horizontal platform and with the tools to build vertical applications and the, uh, the, uh, the database search application also. We're in a really strong IP position. Uh, we have 100 patents found worldwide. Uh, we're, we're by far the largest uh, patent holder in superconducting electronics. Uh, we're very significant even among uh, some of the much larger companies in patents in, uh, in uh, quantum computing. We have 35 issued patents in the US, and, uh, sorry, sorry, 35 issued in 29 pending in the US, 100 worldwide. Uh, for a company our size, it's just an outstanding situation to be in. 
And then we look strongly at a roadmap to build what we consider to be a commercial viable uh, system. The system we're, uh, we're demonstrating today is 60 qubits, and the reason for doing this announcement was to, we feel that we're ready to engage with the outside world. We feel that we're ready to engage with partners, uh, users, and talk about our technology. Uh, we have a very well-defined uh, plan to expand the system to 1,024 qubits in the next 18 months. And uh, we're ready to talk to you. If you have applications, if you're desirous of partnerships, if you have software libraries, we'd like to talk with you. This slide shows the, uh, the timing of the uh, 1024 qubits, 512 qubits. And it, it looks like we're moving slowly between now and uh, the end of this year to get to 32 qubits, but we're actually laying in some uh, foundational uh, technology which um, helps us scale the I.O. Uh, more significantly and quickly. And if you start with a prologue, you have to finish with an epilogue. And I didn't reach into uh, my book of Winston Churchill quotations for this one. Uh, I thought I'd say something seminal. So bear with me. And you can read it. I truly believe what we're, we're heralding a new age of uh, computing. It's a new paradigm of computing uh, with hybrid stru structures of uh, digital computers running programs and quantum computers providing acceleration. I think we have a bright future. And uh, most of all, we'll be opening up new application areas. We'll be exp expanding the uh, existing application areas, and we'll be creating the demand for digital computing cycles and user. I thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoy our event today, and I look forward to talking with anyone who wants to talk with me uh, after the event is over. We're going to run a short uh, video now of uh, Dr. Colin Williams from NASA JPL and uh, Dr. Alan as for the music uh, from Harvard University. I should point out, uh, uh, as a matter of honesty, that we have business relationships with both of these gentlemen. Uh, we are supporting a, um, a program at Harvard, uh, which uh, Dr. Alan uh, uh, which Alan is, uh, is heading up. And we have an interesting business relationship with NASA GPL. Uh, but I'm sure that these uh, gentlemen uh, will give the uh, it's a policy and a company. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>